All right, good evening. Today we're going to make some improvements to the the way I've designed and built this. So at the moment, all the collapses are just stuck through. I haven't followed the correct measurements for the positioning of the coaxes onto here. And one comment on the last video said that this rear disc should be insulated from the rest of the rod. Now I haven't actually seen that in anyone else's design, but let will see if it makes a difference. So, because I've already like drilled holes in this and made a mess of it, I have another one. So we're going to disassemble it and another design improvement rather than using these bits of coax just sold it onto the back of the plate like that with the internal so the screening braid soldered on and the internal coax just bent over and soldered there what I've come up with what I've come up with is these so this is a 5 meter SMA extension cable so they screw together but the good thing about these we get a good zoom on them is their bolt heads so we can drill the correct size hole in the disc thread this through and clamp it down sorry it's freezing out here tonight we're in the van and i've got a diode but the reason we've got the diode is because it fits quite nicely in the center pole and that will come through to the second disc so I'll get this taken apart and we're going to have another go. Our back here. I'm going to see if this is enough to warm the discs up and get these wires off. I'm imagining probably not. It's looking like a no. Never mind, we've got another idea. Alright, so I'm just going to cut the uh, coax wires off and thread the old rear disc and all its swashes. Two hours later, when I'll apart. It's amazing that the holes will draw the right size, but the copper is actually squashed down. I won't make you watch all of this. Alright, so on this disc, we need to get off these two bits of wire from the previous tests. One. And the other. Let me up. That's the quickest way to do it. While we're here, let's make the hole a bit bigger just to... That's going to be quite hot. That's got a bit of rag. That's a bad idea. Yeah, that's quite cool. Uh, bit bent out of shape now, but we've got a voice here which will allow us to get it roughly back in our shape. I suppose shape is probably quite critical to how well it works. That's better. Not ideal, but it's better. Which means this should now fit on there a lot easier. So the instructions. Let's go back a bit stated however it is that we need to so on the original instructions why is it gone sideways that's useless that the coax needs to be 11 mil on into the edge of this disc so we're going to drill well mark out and drill 11 mil from the edge to there and then use that to drill the holes in the larger disc See if it works any better if we do it properly. But in the process, I was saying this disc is apparently neat. Let's check with the lower. This disc apparently needs to be insulated from the rod. I don't know how true that is, but we'll find out. So take our disc, make it eleven. Close enough for farming. There we are, 11.04. All I'm going to do is scrub a line there and 90 degrees out there. That now tells us there and there where we need to drill. Yeah, let's do that. So 
exactly 90 degrees up from that is there. Okay, and thereabouts. Yep, got two holes to drill. Alright, use that. Two holes we've drilled to mark the second disc. Alright, it's got both in the vise. Going to pilot the holes with the smallest drill that I can bob to use. Perfect. Alright, so what I've done is I've took the bulkhead nut off of the bulkhead fitting. And I'm just going to offer that up, 6.5, it's going to be slightly larger than the hole in the centre, that's why I like to do it, because it just makes life easier. So we drill, oh well, not quite 90 degrees out, but pretty close. We drill these up to 6.5, when the bulkhead's through, assemble it, push the centre leg through and solder it, so here we go. Sharp drill. Perfect. So, in theory, take our lead, pop it through like that. Now, it's going to go through all ang ang angular. angular because we've got a lot of mess on the back of the disc where I've drilled the holes. So, we we'll get those off. To do it the easy way, or the cheating way, just to use a large drill. Don't do this with a really sharp drill. You will do yourself some damage. Yeah, it's all right. It's not perfect. Not grease on me. Jaws are working in your van. This drill is actually quite sharp. So I'm take a bit of rag. So I don't keep hurting my hand. It's working pretty well. Right, so we took the the edges off those holes. Now we should on the bulkhead fitting again. Here. So I'm just gonna go through there. It comes with if I can get the thing off the table, do a little crinkly washer and the nut. So, and, what do you reckon, 8, 9, 8 if it's metric, 9 if it's ridiculous, it's an 8, so, uh, another 8, that's a 10, it's an 8, right. on the back, on the front, give it tightened up. And that does mean I skip one piece of soldering that I no longer have to do. Now, if I get my uh, about 87 degree mill out hole, another bag of coax. This will leave it wrapped up like that. Rub everything off, that's off. The washer, plate, and it's me saying this one's going to be a bit more accurate and still haven't drilled the holes anywhere near accurate. And I've got two more things I can break off when I'm tightening the nuts down. Even better. Perfect. Two spanners. Fancy now, get my ratchet spanner out. There we are, a plate with bulkhead mounted coaxes. 
these are really cheap off eBay. I mean, I was searching for um, SMA, a, a piece of flying lead or something to work with. But, to be honest, <laughs> these SMA extensions, I bought them for not a lot. I did try to find out. I bought four of them. I think they're about 12 quid delivered. So that's not too bad going. So only find is my drawing again. So dimensions. So from the slightly larger reflector to this one is 33 mil. No, I'm sorry. From there to there is nine millimeters. So we need to get this to nine millimeters. So the way. I think I did this last time. You might have to get it set up on the Metoyo. Ah, oh, that's pretty close. So, look at that. That's going to be about a nut and a washer or two. Somewhere around here I have my washer and the nut that I used last time, which got me to pretty much bang on where I want to be. That one go on. Wow, solding those is going to be a bit of fun when it's all together. Yeah, here's what it is, it's got to go together. Spin the nut on. Alright, we need that really thin 13, remember this underneath everything. Get that in there. You've got to have some pretty thin 13 mil spanners if you want to do this. I've got these Mac ones which won't fit through. And click. And the Tang one. The Tang one does fit. There's quite a bit of difference in the width of them. Well I say quite a bit. Enough. Enough to make it worth it. So the next bit I've got a bit of Solder those bits in with this assembled. It's going to be quite difficult. We manage, we find a way. So, we're going to redo this one, but this time we're going to go for. Where is it? 10 millimeters. But I've also got to try and insulate this, so. Hmm. I have some plastic washers. Open this up a bit. Get our 10. 10.06. It's pretty damn close. Drain right two of them. Yeah, I'd say we're pretty good to go on that, I think. And what we're going to do, I'm use some insulation tape somewhere in here. Got some tape. So. Simply could break a bit of that off. Might as well just go around the nut as well, aren't I? Because the washers are oversized and I've drilled the hole in the new piece oversized. That is terrible. Let's try again. Oh <laughs> why does everything not work when it's cold? Right, we're gonna try again. Go around the nut. Yeah, two washers. Looks really bodged now, doesn't it? But there are two washers go over, leaving this portion where the disc's gonna sit. Like that. Yeah, I'd say we're uh, doing well. We need to align the two coax with their respective holes. How have they ended up so far away? I don't even understand that. Hmm. <laughs> One moment. Right, I've resolved my alignment issue by um, turning this disc round. Solve that. <laughs> it shouldn't have made a difference, but turns out 
I'm not very good at um, measuring things when I'm in a bit of a rush and it's getting on a bit at night. So, okay, we're going to run it down on it and see if it goes down on the tape or not. I really don't want to damage them coax wires either because there's a lot of bending around and messing about going on. Damaging my coax wires. Oh yeah, especially what I'm also to make sure that this ends up about yeah. So that wants to be make sure that they don't touch. God, oh, there's so much distortion in this disc. Like so maybe I should put some washers on those coaxes. Right, they're not touching at the moment, so that's the main thing. Yeah, I'm going to fiddle with this and we'll do some results in a minute, but you get the idea. Right, as the night draws on, the uh, quality of the work gets slightly worse. But as we all do, uh, see if we can get it soldered up now. There is the solder. Tight. So, I think we're probably going to need the extra heat. Put that down. Oh, tell you what, we'll throw everything on the floor first. Uh, that so, now I'm going to burn my hands while we try and do this. Well, this should make solder of this a lot easier. I can't even get the heat over here. Just put the solder on there, put the wire in. One. You missed that completely. And now we're going to rotate this round. Turn the fire off quickly. Stay there. One, it's got to go there, and find the diode. The idea is, and drop that piece of wire on the centre there, and bend it over. Like so, ouch! Get the fire started again. Just stay flat. Here, get the actual other oil out. It's hot. It allows us to be able to solve this. There we go. That's it. Easy. Alright, so you get the idea of what we've done. Cax is cut at the centre of those holes. Sold onto the disc at 90 degrees. I'm going to make sure there's a gap in between there. But yeah, I think we're ready for another test. Put all this junk away. And go plug it in again. Fingers crossed, we haven't wasted loads of time to make some possibly worse. Alright, so here we are. So we set up again with the new uh, isolated rear disc. I have actually checked with the meter and it is definitely isolated from the rest, so it did work. Got our cables running inside to the router, which is giving us the same amount of signal as previously. So, if I had put my phone in the right pocket, I'd be able to get it out and do this, but what we need to do, a speed test. So previously we managed to pull about I think it was 100 or something, 102 and nearly four, four and a half megabit. So 
so yeah we're down a bit tonight but we are we do have some pretty terrible weather at the moment so I can't really blame fully the changes to the antenna but I can't really say they've made any difference it's operating about as well the uploads a bit naff tonight but the thing we can do is we've got five meters more cable so I want to see how that affects the signal so we're going to plug some more cable in and maybe move the antenna further further up out of the way see if we get any better here we go right we're getting to the end of the evening now yeah we've got four bars of signal and now the antenna has moved up onto the roof um and we seem to have made an improvement whether it's through height or whatever but let's see what we get now So we're pushing about the same download speed we were previously 100 megabits ish it's very good upload that's where we made our difference 10 to 11 megabits topping out out there considering we were barely able to get the high fours before there we go so it's hard to say whether it's the changes we've made I don't know that adding more cable really is detrimental to how it works. But I'm going to try that again now. We're going to swap, put some more cable in, see if it ruins the signal again. And yeah, looks like tonight's video is going to go up a lot quicker. Right, so I'm not 100% sure the changes to the antenna actually made a lot of difference, but it is what it is. We put the antenna up on top of the roof, which appears to have helped the upload speed a bit. So we do one final speed test, we're going to do it on the computer via the ethernet. Right, set going. There we are, go. Let's see what we get here. Mm, doing well. The upload we were able to get, what was it, 4.5 before? So the uploading videos was the trouble. Got to a hundred. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. So this video we're going to well, the one you're watching now is probably going to upload even faster again than the last one. So I don't know. Maybe just putting the antenna higher. Or isolating the back plate from the front plate, I should actually do more comparisons with it up on the roof rather than down on the ground. We'll see what the difference is. Anyway, there's a few. Uh, well, it's going to get boring with all the antenna videos, but I'm going to try making another one with more of the smaller discs on the antenna, more collectors as they're called, and see if that makes any difference. See you next time. And a final addition, thanks to Oggy Gaming for his idea to isolate the um, the first disc from the others. You can see this in the comment section. It's the only comment on the video between me and him. But no, thank you. It's worth a try, and now I'm going to keep playing this idea. Cheers.